Cyberbrainer is an online training platform designed to help individuals and teens learn the latest technologies and become certified professionals producing a comprehensive learning experience. For some of the folks from my own practical experience, people are not really comfortable because those who are traditionally from an H. Our background, they prefer an Excel-based loading because that is the way they are used to maintaining their data. So what they would do is they would maintain all their data in Excel and they prefer to load this rather than coming on to this clean loading everything. They generally do not prefer this. Some HR folks do not prefer. This is from my own personal experience. No, have no offense, but some HRs really do prefer the Excel way of working rather than the system way of working. So for them, this isn't easier to use for math. Easier to use for math when I compare with my UI relevant setup. Clear on this, guys. Any questions? I do not have a template, so what I will do is I will try to create a new template today. I would, I have to fill out all of these data. It's going to obviously take some time, but I'll just show you how to do it, and then I will share the template across with you by the end of today, and then you can load it across, but I will show you how to load it actually. So this is security. This is the EIB definition that I have created, and the way I would load this. This is not mine. Let me go to my definition over here. OK position in the end of the EIB. So, in order to load my EIB, I go to my view integration system, or INTSYS, and then I go to my integration definition and then I go to related actions integration system. Sorry. Integration, not integration system. And then I say, launch. So if you see, I have given the value here as retrieval method over here on the left side. I'm just highlighting it in the mouse. Attach file at your launch. We will see that. Next, though, now I'm going to do is run frequency. And if I want to run this like other, I think it was really any, or question many either of you are asking, how do I schedule it? This is the way I can schedule it. If I want to schedule this to be run at a periodic interval, I can do it as well. So, similar to how we saw for report scheduling, the same option. Next, I hit OK, then over here, create position web service at management, I will give the value here a specify value. I will choose a value over here as create integration attachment, and then over here, I will just load my file. I'm just trying to create a file over here, so I just need some time to create all those values. I will click. And attach to here. Alright, this is an empty template, so I'm not going to load anything and once I load it over here, if I want to mention other options over here, I can do it. For example, if I'm trying to load, say, 10,000 rows and 10,000 rows, how this will work in a real world is, out of the 10,000 rows, if 10 rows have errors, it is not that out of the 10,000 rows, the 10 rows have error out, so the process will fail for the rest of them. It does not work in that way. It will ideally work for all the 9,990 rows. Only those 10 will error out. So the rest of the 10, which have error out due to some data issues, you can reload the template with the correct data representation values and reload them. That is going to help it out. So I repeat, if I have 10 rows erroring out in my 10,000 row data set, I can ensure all the work it does. Ensure that the rest of the 9,990 rows successfully load and only 10 rows will error out which I can load it back again in my second run. That is number one option.
Second, if out of those 10,000 rows, I know that the 1,000 is going to be loading as an error, I can set a cutoff limit where I'm going to say, if it hits a cutoff limit of, say, 50 rows, then the process will automatically halt. If it has reached a threshold error value of 50 rows, then it will be the same. So if it will error out, that is number one. All right, I can set up this particular value as my error threshold limit. Next option I have over here is validate only load, which means there are like two modes over here. 1. I want to only validate my Excel template, but I do not want to load it at first because some of the users first time, when they are not able to load the same. They will load it as if they will load it only as a validate. So if I check this box, it means it is going to only validate but not load. Validate for any errors which are there in my load. All right. It is not going to have any kind of a loading done. The data is not going to hit the database, it is only going to validate for errors and checks. That's all it's going to. That's what we mean. But what we mean is a validate only more. I'm going to check this box. It's going to only validate. That is one. Next, add errors to the attachment. So every time a loaded, this particular attachment is going to come out with all the values which are error out and the valid error results will also be loaded in this attachment file. That you will see. As a part of the output. That is what this option is going to. Be clear on this as far. Clear on this. What I will do is I just need something like half an hour to load. This is around 10 or 15 rows. I will load this and I will share the template and also the details of this particular integration process in probably half an hour's time or one hour maximum. You can check it up as well. Clear on this so far, but this is the mechanism, how you would load an inbound process. Clear on this as far. Any questions? Team. So when I'm going to transform my legacy data from my legacy HRT system, like JD Edwards or Six's Factor, People Saw, or Coliseum Suite, whichever it is on to work day, then I would use this particular EIV tool. And one more important information to you, when we dealt with business processes, remember I told you when you create a business process. Please ensure that the performance is within limits. All right, it should be within limits, because when I load hundreds and thousands of rows of data, my, my business process should be able to handle it. Otherwise it's going to go for a toss. It's going to go for a toss. Clear on this. Any questions? Team. Because it will go for a toss if I'm going to have so much of information and so much of processes in between it and so much of integrations and everything. Imagine running 100,000 rows, 100,000 rows of data. If you're going to load it in one shot, if my business process is going to be all crap, then it's going to take several days. Because it's going to have so much of transformation. So that's why, in my external load definition of my business process, I try to keep it as lean as possible. And again, and again, my EIBs are going to be loaded only by very, very cherry-picked users, which could be at an admin level people only. Not every Tom, Deck and Harry is going to have access to load my EIB. So I'm going to use only cherry-picked. Admin or higher level users are going to have access to running EIBs. Not everybody's going to have access to it. If that makes sense to you as well. Let me open my higher BP definition. It really makes sense for you. I'm opening higher Rian.
I'll write in this higher BP definition, ignore the error. What is your other? Okay. Okay, so okay. So in my higher BP step, or higher BP that I have, if I'm going to transform this to an EIB. So I'm added all the mandatory ones. The mandatory ones, like I said earlier, work, change our assignment, pay group assignment, and create workday account. These are the mandatory three steps which are required. If I want to have onboarding, I can have it onboarding. Also, if I won't have onboarding, I can have onboarding. Otherwise, it's okay for me to skip onboarding as well. But mandatory. I need to have change our design, which is going to happen by default and I will have in my higher EIB template. I will have a change our assignment template. I will have a template for assign P group as well, just like what you have over here. I will have a assigned pay group as well. Change our assignment will also be available. Workday account will automatically be created because this is a workday service. So I automatically run and create my workday account automatically. So all these will be there, so I will keep it to bare bones of what is required. Rest of them I can ignore. Probably, I will ignore approvals. If I do not want to have approvals, I can ignore approvals. Maybe onboarding as well. If I do not want to have onboarding for all those people who I'm going to load, because this is more used on an as and when basis safe, I'm going to pull the data from my legacy. It is to load all my legacy employees who would have been hired some 10 years in the past as well. For them I need not initiate onboarding again, right? So I wouldn't need them, so I would need only our assignment, assign pay groups, and create workday account. That should go to suffice. I may not need approvals. I may not need onboarding for them. So I will keep only these three mandatory, your steps A1, A2, before I'm going to be knocked out. Before we wind up for the day, because I will just load this